How's it going Noisegate family? It's your boy Tom here and today we're going to have a look at some USB microphones, have a look at their similarities and their differences so you can make a choice on which one is best for you. USB mics bridge the gap for those that don't have the technical know-how to set up their own studio at home. Everything you need is bundled into the microphone and it is just plug and play ready to go. What I have in front of me is the Rode NT-USB, the AKG Lyra and the Blue Yeti. I'm going to touch on the similarities that these mics have before we dive into each one individually. They're all USB microphones. They all sit within $30 of each other on the market. They all come with a stand and cable necessary to get started from the get-go. And they all have headphone monitoring ports, like this one on the Lyra here, allowing you to directly monitor yourself, which is very important because it's impossible to monitor yourself with any kind of delay in your headphones. There are some qualities you need to be aware of when choosing a USB microphone. The sample rate and bit depth correspond to the quality and resolution of the recording. The frequency response corresponds to what the microphone can pick up across the audible spectrum. And the max SPL corresponds to the maximum volume a microphone can handle before the signal starts to break up. Now let's have a look at the Rode NT-USB. The Rode NT-USB records a 16-bit bit depth, 48 kilohertz sample rate, has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and can handle a max SPL of 110 decibels. This is too low for recording loud instruments such as brass, drums, or guitar cabinets. The Rode NT-USB has a cardioid polar pattern, ideal for streamers, vloggers, and people looking for a mic for their online meetings. Let's have a listen to how it sounds. This is my voice on the Rode NT-USB. On the mic, you have a knob to control your headphone volume and a knob to control the blend between the computer output and the microphone output. The NT-USB comes with a pop filter to help remove plosives, a tabletop stand, a six meter long cable, and a carry case. It's compatible with mobile devices, so you can combine the NT-USB with a mobile device and have yourself a portable recording studio. The Rode NT-USB has a very steady build quality and the knobs on the side move quite smoothly and feel good. The stand itself is also quite sturdy and I'm a fan of this pop filter. Let's have a look at the Blue Yeti. The Blue Yeti records at a 16-bit bit depth, 48 kilohertz sample rate, has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and can handle a maximum SPL of 120 decibels. This makes it more suitable for studio recordings of brass or using it as a room mic for your guitar cab or your drum set. The Yeti has three capsules and four pickup patterns. Figure eight, Omni, Cardioid, and Stereo. The first three patterns I mentioned are Mono, which are great for podcasts or meetings with multiple people in different configurations. The Stereo configuration is great for picking up the ambience of a room as well as the direct sound of what you're recording. Let's have a listen to the Blue Yeti in both Mono and Stereo. This is my voice on the Blue Yeti. The microphone has a mute button, pickup pattern selector, a mic gain control knob, and headphone volume knob all built onto it. This is very handy to have all the controls on the microphone. However, it is important to not touch it whilst you're recording because it will pick up the sound of you handling the microphone. The Yeti comes with a metal stand with cable management and a two meter USB cable. Like the NT-USB, the Yeti has a robust build quality and I think it looks pretty cool. Let's move on to the Lyra. The Lyra records at a 24-bit bit depth, 192 kilohertz sample rate, has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and a max SPL of 129 decibels. This means it's the most robust of the three mics that we've looked at today and can handle the loudest sounds. The Lyra has four capsules and four pickup patterns. Front, which is cardioid. Front and back, which is figure eight. Tight stereo, which is a cardioid stereo configuration and wide stereo, which is an omni stereo configuration. The Lyra has a mute button, a pickup pattern selector, a mic gain knob, and a headphone gain knob built onto it. It comes with a metal stand and a two meter long USB cable. The Lyra is good for both studio recording and content creation, and I think that it's more versatile than the Yeti due to its two stereo patterns and two mono patterns. Let's have a listen to the Lyra in both mono and stereo.
this is my voice on the AKG Lyra. In terms of build quality, the Lyra is just as sturdy as the previous two microphones and it has this cool old school look to it and it doesn't come in black. If I had to pick a clear winner, I'd choose the Lyra. It records at the highest quality, can handle the highest sound pressure, has the most versatile pickup patterns and is the most affordable of the three. I hope this has been useful for you, but as always, check it out for yourself. If you got any questions, leave them in the comment section below and smash that like button for me.